I've got another stack of medicines that I need to use. Um, and of course my APAP machine, which helps me breathe at night. How much time do you spend in bed, would you say, every day? Between here and the sofa is pretty much my whole life. Jo Bruce was diagnosed with ME in her late 30s. It makes every day difficult. There's reminders everywhere in every room of the house about being disabled at a young age. So I didn't expect to have to research things like um, ubiquinol, which I wouldn't even have known how to say that a few years ago. And another reminder in the bathroom I uh, wasn't expecting to need a stool, shower stool, at the age of 50 either. Um, I've had this uh, since I was about 45, I think. It's taken everything, yeah, and not just from me. You can never underestimate how much it takes from your family, from my husband. When he married me, this isn't what he signed up for either. So it didn't just steal from me, it stole, it's stolen from him too. And you have no idea how guilty I feel about that. Sometimes. Sorry, I didn't know where that came from. <laughs> you don't say these things out loud sometimes. <laughs> Sorry. I felt I was like needing a cry, so I'm just going to get it out. As Jo's world got smaller and smaller because of ME, she found herself fighting to be believed. It's exhausting. Um, it's exhausting that every time you go into the doctor's surgery, you know that you're talking to somebody who thinks that your illness is psychosomatic. I was misdiagnosed as having depression. I was misdiagnosed as having labyrinthitis. Um, I, I, there was kind of the subtle undertone that I was a bit of a malingerer, looking for an easy way out. Um, but nobody would choose this life. Jo has volunteered to take part in the largest genetic study of ME in the world. It's happening just a few miles away from her flat in Edinburgh. So let's talk about batch three, Deanna. 25,000 DNA samples are being analysed by scientists. They want to understand more about the disease and hope to discover genetic causes for why people become ill so effective treatments can be found. It's really lovely to speak with our participants. They are very thankful for this project. It has been very humbling. Do you think it's a sense that you're giving them a, a voice? I believe so. Um, a recognition of their illness. Uh, some type of hope that they will finally, after many years of being um, not believed, that they will finally see some answers. The study is UK-wide and long overdue, according to the professor who's leading it. ME research in genetics is 20 years behind the times. It's way behind all these other diseases like multiple sclerosis, diabetes, neurodegenerative conditions. It's way behind. And there must be societal reasons for this. Why is it that we haven't been able to fund projects on uh, a disease that is so female biased? There are four or five women to, to, uh, for each male. Why is it that we, we have not been able to pour our resources into this awful, awful disease when it costs the country billions of pounds a year and yet only two or three pounds per person is given for research. This is a, a problem that isn't to do with fatigue of individuals. This is a problem to do with compassion fatigue in the United Kingdom. People like me have been crying out for proper biomedical research instead of psychological studies, which are the only things that ever seem to get funded. All the really big breakthroughs that have happened in Parkinson's and Alzheimer's in the last 10 years, it's been because of a study exactly like this one. It's the start of something, you know, not, not the end. The results of the Decode ME study are expected to be published one year from now. The Department for Health and Social Care in England, who ran a survey across the devolved nation, said in a statement, we know the impact that ME and chronic fatigue syndrome can have, which is why we are improving the care and support available and investing in research.